Good morning and the Lord to be with you. It's good to see everyone this morning. I am uh, glad you're here. Looks like most everybody made the time change well this morning. Um, we uh, had church council at 7, so I had so many alarms set this morning at uh, about 5.15. It sounded like the Rowan County Fair at our house. So, uh, so we, we all set and uh, we were squared away. So uh, just a couple of things I want to uh, share before worship. Um, the uh, catechism, uh, our 7th, 8th, and ninth graders are going to meet today at 3.30 here in the uh, sanctuary. And uh, we'll be um, meeting at 3.30, from 3.30 to 5. So we will uh, look forward to, uh, to sharing that together with you. Give me just a moment. Somebody handed me one thing here. Um, let me make sure. Okay. Um, after our offering this morning, after offering and our offering music, we're going to pause worship for just a couple of minutes for a congregational meeting. There is a, uh, a recommendation uh, in your bulletin. It's in the green sheet for uh, a paving project here at the church. So we'll take just a couple of moments for our uh, congregational meeting, and then we will complete the service. And then uh, one area of good news regarding worship, the uh, Worship and Music made a recommendation to council, church council this morning, and council is approved. We are, uh, we are going to begin kind of a, a slow re-entry plan back into the sanctuary, um, and it will begin this Wednesday night. Our Wednesday night services from here on out will be in the, uh, in the sanctuary, and then leading into um, Palm Sunday and Easter, and all this will be out to you later this week. Palm Sunday and Easter, uh, we'll continue with our regular two services, but uh, one will be here in the Family Life Center, and then one will be in the sanctuary. So more details are coming out, and uh, we'll, we'll have an opportunity where we'll be worshiping in both spaces so that everyone will have an opportunity to be comfortable and safe uh, until, until this is, all of this is behind us. Uh, and as the 200-year-old uh, uh, spiritual says, soon and very soon, uh, we will continue to pray that along the way. So let's take a couple of minutes and let's kind of bring ourselves from the busyness of the day and let's bring ourselves to a place of worship. <laughs>
Let us stand for our confession and forgiveness. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of grace and mercy, show us your ways and teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for you are the Lord of our salvation, for whom we wait. Amen. Amen. If we say we have fellowship with God while we walk in the darkness, we do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our sin. Let us confess. Heavenly Father, have mercy on us according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with a willing spirit. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we whose evil deeds worthily deserve to be punished, by the comfort of your grace, may mercifully be relieved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Before I read the New Testament reading, I'm not sick. I'm just enjoying all these blossoms and the trees and the flowers. <laughs> so please excuse me. The New Testament reading comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, so I'm reading it backwards, okay? So it's just a change, make sure you're awake. Please read with me Psalm 107 responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes. They found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Here ends the reading of the psalm. Now we'll go back to the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. Everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent, if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
In our gospel reading this morning, we hear the story of Nicodemus, but what we hear even more familiar is the um, is Jesus speaking and sharing that one phrase that is probably most memorable or maybe most memorized, and that is John 3.16. Listen carefully to the conversation in which Jesus is having where John 3.16 is a part. And this will be a part of our message Bible study this morning, and the purple sheet that you have with you, that will be our guide as well. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may, clear, may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being present with us in worship this morning. Open our hearts and our minds to your word, that it might find a place within us and that our actions may reflect your love. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. John 3.16, I don't know the statistics, maybe as your pastor and resident theologian, I maybe should have researched it, but I didn't. But it's probably easy to say that John 3.16 is one of the most memorized, or can we at the very least say the most familiar of the scripture readings, maybe? John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I was really nervous there because to say it was memorized and if I didn't get it right, I still don't think I got it word for word uh, in full disclosure there. Uh, hold on. I was pretty close. So I think we got the basic idea. Um, John 3.16 is one of those fascinating parts of scripture that it is so familiar to us that we have to be very careful. The John 3.16 is so familiar to us that we have to be careful that we just don't fire it out and we say it with our words that we might just buzz right through it and not fully grasp the power and how the gospel just emerges from that one very long sentence. Um, I would liken it to, uh, imagine you've, you have your phone and you're going to call someone, someone that you have called a thousand times. And you just automatically get your phone and you just pop the number in. And you could do it without even looking at the keypad because you know that number so well. You can just do it without thinking. Um, another example of that could be that, that you were watching a movie. Or like me, there are certain movies, there are a handful of movies that I have seen so many times, and I love them, that when the movie comes on, this drives my family absolutely crazy. <clears throat> when this movie comes on, I could turn down the volume and just quote the movie all the way through. I'd be interested to hear what movies of yours that, that you can do that. You know it so well that it just kind of flies by without thinking. 
Another example is this. Imagine that all of you know your route from the church to home so well. And I do not recommend this whatsoever at all. But today, after worship, you get in your car, you close your eyes. I bet most of you could get to your driveway without even really thinking about it. Okay? Again, I do not endorse that for all the attorneys watching at home. But sometimes there are things that are so familiar to us, we also have to be very careful because we'll miss it. And that's the way it is with John 3.16 is, is for us to be familiar with it. We have to be familiar with everything that is around it. So what's happening here? This is not just Jesus standing up and just tossing out random sayings, hoping that someone will copy it down. No. Jesus is in a pretty important discussion with someone who is in the midst of trying to figure out who Jesus is. Here's what's happened. There's been the Passover feast. There has, uh, Jesus has already shared in his very early ministry. He has already had the, his first miracle, the wedding at Cana. He has had his first miracle and now he is being followed. He is being followed, the scholars, the the lawyers, that is, would be the, the Pharisees, people whose attention to, the God, uh, to God's law, they're following Jesus. They're not sure that they're buying what he's selling. Well, in the middle of the night, there's one of them. The scholar, Pharisee, you could say a lawyer of the word. He comes to Jesus, but as not to raise suspicion, he comes to Jesus undercover in the night. He comes to Jesus and he says, I, I need to know. I see the signs. I've heard the talk. I've seen it for myself. Are you the one who is to come? Are you the one who is to come? And Jesus answered him, and this is before our text begins. Jesus answers him and says, most assuredly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So he and Nicodemus kind of go back and forth a little bit. And, and Jesus again goes full on teaching them. He doesn't just give him the answers to fill in the blank, but he begins to give him what his soul needs and what he is asking for. But it just so happens in the midst of that conversation that Jesus lays out almost the gospel as sometimes called the gospel in miniature. For God so loved the world. And he shares that gospel with him in a very amazing thing. Um, think about this with worship. Now, as a part of uh, the Lutheran tradition and, and also more of, the, uh, more of the, the higher church traditions of worship, there is much of the liturgy that we follow. And um, some of our young kids, I'm meeting with our confirmation, our catechism class today. And uh, you need to pray for them because I am going to run. We are going to cover so much material in 90 minutes. They're going to be exhausted when they get home. To their parents, you're welcome. So we're talking about worship today. Worship. And how it's not just a gathering of folks where we kind of listen to scripture, we talk back and forth to each other, Lord's Prayer, Apostles' Creed, but it is an ancient form, and by ancient, I mean, it, this goes all the way back to Old Testament and the Psalms. We come together and worship, and it is a conversation between God's people to God. We're going to be offering, as we are today, our prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And we've already started. In fact, we're just now getting started. And what we're going to talk about today is how there is a shape and an order to worship. And that's going to be one of our future uh, Sunday kind of Bible study uh, pieces that I'm going to do with the congregation too. But I want to share with them and show them that that order is not just rote memorization. But sometimes I think that's good because... It's not just a memory here, but it's a memory in our heart. But how even with that, we have to be careful. We have to be careful that we just don't brush right by 
the gospel just because we have it memorized in our head. The Lord's Prayer, for an example. Oh, how sad it would be if we share and pray the Lord's Prayer, but, but our minds are just on something else, and we miss the part where we pray, Lord, thy will be done. Or even forgive us our trespasses. How sad it would be if we are cruising and we're in a, a verbal rhythm of the Apostles' Creed and all of a sudden we just blow right by the part that says, I believe in God the Father, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the resurrection of the dead, and life everlasting. Because see, knowing it by heart is one thing, but knowing it in our heart, in our heart, is something different, and it is something more. Well, that's what Nicodemus was searching for. Nicodemus was out there. He says, you know, he says, I'm seeing, I'm seeing these things Jesus is doing. I'm seeing the people's reaction to Jesus. I'm hearing things. You know, all the senses are there. But he says, I, I need to have that encounter with Christ, and I need to figure out what this is about. I need to find it out for sure. So Jesus tosses two things out there. And I, I have to say, this, these are the images for me that stand out in Scripture. I think, you know, we all have those images that stand out the most. You know, I could read a nursery rhyme, and every single one of us might pick out a word that jumps out at us, and we would all have different things. For me, the two images that stand out the most are, are light and dark. Walking in, in, the, in, in the light of Christ, walking in the darkness of evil. Sin, forgiveness, e you know, good, evil. That, that's a whole part of Scripture. Well, listen to what he says. Jesus is speaking to, um, to, to Nicodemus, and he says, To live in the darkness is to be condemned, is to perish. Verse 16, how is it said in verse 16? Whoever believes in him, excuse me, uh, verse 16. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Look at verse 18. Verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. And then the th uh, verse 20. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light, okay? Darkness, darkness, darkness. Check, check, check. There you go. Jesus lays it out there. But he doesn't leave it there. He doesn't leave it there. He talks about the light, that to live in the light is to believe in Christ and his eternal promise. Go back to John 3.16 again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Light and life, it's all connected together in the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. Darkness and sin are all connected because they oppose Christ and they stand against everything that we know or that God knows. But what is it as a sinful people? We like to, unfortunately, our sinful nature, we get hung up in the death and the darkness and, and the sinfulness, right? We get hung up there. If you will, go to the very front of your bulletin, <clears throat> to the confession and forgiveness. Go to the very front. <clears throat> right at the middle of the page under confession and forgiveness. Do you see where it says, if we say we have fellowship with God? This is taken from 1 John. All of our scripture is taken, or all of our liturgy is taken directly from scripture. Look at what it says. This is from 1 John, the first chapter, 6 and 7. If we say we have fellowship with God while we walk in the darkness, sin, we do not live according to the truth. 
But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our sin. Well, that's what Jesus is telling Nicodemus. Jesus is saying, Nicodemus, let me show you there's, there's a difference here. There's sin and death and darkness. People that walk in the darkness, they don't want the light. And then he comes back over and says, Nicodemus, those who live in the light believe in God and believe in his power to forgive us. And believe in his power to forgive us. You see, that's the whole shape of God's promises. Is that if we're walking in the darkness, then we have no need, no desire, and really no real want to be in the presence of God. Or, as Jesus says, sometimes we walk in the darkness because the light exposes our sins. Now that's hard to hear. That's hard to say. But I think that's true for all of God's people and, and for all of us at one, one time or another. Is that to walk in the darkness, not that that's a comfortable place to be, but if we walk in the light, then all of our sinfulness is exposed. But just as Jesus did to Nicodemus, remember Jesus invited Nicodemus in, they have that one-on-one -on -one God does the same thing with us through Jesus Christ. He says, let me invite you into the light. Yes, sin, death, and the devil brings us to the darkness. It causes us to, to say things, to do things, and even to think things that do not reflect God or his son, Jesus Christ, and pull us into sin and away from him. But Jesus invites us in and says, let me show you the light. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish and remain in the dark, but will have eternal life where sins are forgiven and darkness is no more. Boy, that's a big difference. Rather to live in the light and to live in the dark. Um, Jack and I, this was a couple of weeks ago, I had, um, I had noticed, and I don't know if it's like you, but sometimes if a light bulb is out, you just kind of, you know, let it go. If there's a light bulb out at the house, you're like, oh, okay, the light bulb's out, life continues. If there's two out, yeah, there's, a, there's two lights out. And then you go, and sometimes it's not until five or six are out, then you go, oh, I got to change some light bulbs. Then it becomes a serious situation, right? We spent, I think, an hour one night uh, because uh, two of my sons, you know, don't live at the house anymore. There are a couple of rooms unoccupied and uh, light bulbs are out. You know, we don't notice it as much. I think we spent an hour and a half one night changing light bulbs. It was, uh, it was fun, but we were just changing light bulbs all over the place. And I was kind of amazed at some of the rooms upstairs in the parsonage that really hadn't been lit that much because they weren't being used. And I realized, wow, that's kind of cool. I, I never realized that spot on the carpet that I forgot to clean up. Or I never realized, you know, I, you realize some of the things that you don't think. And, and how it is nice to live in the light because sometimes it can be ignored for so long. All of a sudden, you're fully in the darkness before you, we realize we've strayed from God. And isn't that the way sin is? Sin pulls us in gradually. Pulls us in gradually before next thing you know, we have betrayed God and his promises, not just in small ways, but many, many small ways become very large. But see, it is God who comes to us. God invites us as, God did, as Jesus did to Nicodemus and he says Nicodemus you come to me let me share with you exactly what it is there is darkness and there is light and there in the light there is our Lord Jesus Christ and he shares with us that eternal promise so the law in the midst of this is living in the darkness that's not where we want to be 
That's not where God is. That's not where his promises are. But to live in the light, that's where we are fully believing. It's, it's like the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, John 3, 16. To hear it and to be able to, to put it out there really fast without even thinking is one thing. But to know it in our heart and to believe in the promises, that's where Christ is. And what is the gospel? It's the very same gospel. And, and I like this. This is to put us in the place of scripture. You look at Nicodemus. Nicodemus received the very same message from Jesus Christ that we, that he shares with us. All those years ago, the very same message that Jesus gave Nicodemus is the same message that he gives us. Is that it is only through Jesus Christ that we go to the Father. And it is the Father's desire to bring us together. We saw that last week, didn't we? How great it was to return to the Lord's table. How great it was. And that personal invitation was very clear. Remember? The body of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. That's about as personal and as intimate as it gets. But it probably happened first on the day of your baptism. You are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You, God says, I claim as my child through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's intimacy, the same intimacy that Nicodemus experienced with Jesus on that night when Nicodemus didn't want to be caught by his uh, fellow uh, uh, co-conspirators is the same invitation that you and I have. And what a gift. What a gift it is. It's, it's, it's more meaningful than remembering that phone number that you just fire into your phone without thinking about it. It's, it's even better than the movies you might watch on TV and turn down the sound and just rattle off the dialogue. Although that is a lot of fun, I have to admit. It drives my family crazy, but I, I'll get a kick out of it. It's even better than closing your eyes and, and doing that route home from church. To know it is one thing, but to know it in our heart is another. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. That's one to know here. That's one to know here. But that's especially one to know here. Amen.
Lots of folks we want to include in our prayers this morning. Um, we ask that you remember Leonard Beaver, who is being cared for at home um, in, uh, in these days. We ask that you also remember uh, Nelsie Long, who will be having uh, knee surgery coming up this week. And we celebrated at the early service, uh, receiving and welcoming of, uh, of two new members, although they're very familiar faces to Concordia, um, Ron and uh, Christy Wells, which is uh, uh, Nathan's mom and dad. So uh, we were delighted to be able to, uh, to welcome them as new members, and uh, that, is, that is always, always a joy. Uh, and to look at how fast time flies and how God is with us in the midst of it, um, a year ago tomorrow is, was the date of our last worship uh, prior to uh, being uh, paused for, uh, for COVID. And it's hard to believe that it has been a year and so much has changed in our community and in our world, uh, meaning families, jobs, even just family routines. Um, but something we should not forget is that God saw us through it and is continuing to see us through it. So uh, it's important for us to remember, I guess, if we want to call it, call it an anniversary, but more importantly to remember that God is walking and seeing us through those things. So let's go to our Lord. We pray for remembrance. Gracious Father, help us to remember that we were created in Christ Jesus to do good works and that it is by your grace that we are saved through faith and not of our own merit. Grant us the knowledge and wisdom to understand this is a gift of God. We also pray that we would continue to follow your ways and not the ways of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the members of the church. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we are free to come with confidence into your presence and share in the promise we have in Christ as members of your holy church. We pray that we remain holy, blameless, and covered with your love so we may continue your work. Ensure that we would be humble servants, taking no credit for the ways in which you lead us to care for the world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for comfort. Merciful God, we pray for comfort for those who are hurting and suffering. We pray especially for Leonard Beaver, that you would keep him comfortable and care with his family. We pray that you will be with Nelsie as she has her surgery and during her time of recovery. And for all of those who are simply in need of your presence that we share in the silence of our hearts. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them so they may feel the power of your healing presence and rest assured in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our one and true faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Good morning. We're continuing our meeting. We recessed this morning. We opened a meeting uh, at the 8.30 service. The purpose of this uh, congregational meeting is to vote yes or no on a recommendation from the council for a parking lot and driveway repairs at a cost of $21,890 from the Building Improvement Fund. Um, the disclaimer, just a reminder, the church council acknowledges that because of lower church attendance due to COVID-19, the minimum number required to constitute a quorum for a congregational meeting may not be achieved. Once the COVID-19 pandemic is over, the church council will review the quorum requirements in our constitution and report back to the congregation. Omar, this time we'll uh, come forward. Uh, just a reminder, um, definition of a voting member uh, of Concordia shall be someone who has communed and made a contribution of record during the current or preceding calendar year. Uh, while Omar is speaking, if you'll raise your hand uh, and council members will hand you a ballot. Good morning, thanks Mike. Well, our parking lot needs some maintenance. Um, it's um, been here since the Family Life Center was built. And over time, there's been cracks uh, show up in the pavement and the lines where we park have disappeared. So we are recommending, uh, if you have this sheet, that uh, we address those issues. Uh, the, the major cracks uh, that can be will be cleaned out and uh, filled with a, a rubberized material. And then all the pavement will get a coating of sealer. Um, the cracks in the older section out in front of the sanctuary are really too numerous to, to fill up. So that, that area would just get sealer. So the newer pavement put down when the Family Life Center was built will get the, the sealer. Uh, after all that work is done, uh, then they would restripe all the parking areas. Um, this would be done by the same paving company that put down the pavement uh, at the entrance to the uh, cemetery. Um, so if this is approved by the congregation, it would be done uh, when the temperature is at a, a high enough level that they can manufacture the material that the sealer is made out of. So, any questions? All right, if none, thank you very much. All right. When you are finished voting, if you'll raise your hand, uh, a council member will come collect those. Um, thank you for your time this morning. At this time, we will end the congregational meeting for today's date. Thank you. Let us stand for our doxology. pray. Lord God, you have done great things for us, and holy is your name. Receive and bless all we offer you, our tithes, our abilities, and all you have given us. That may your grace and favor through us make your name known through all the world for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.